Adam, Adam, ah, Adam. Bo. Uh, Travis. Yes. Did either of you guys buy anything on Amazon Prime Day? I didn't, but it's entirely possible that other members of my family <laughs> might have. I was tempted, but I uh, fought the urge. Okay, well, I did it because they were selling Apple AirPod Pluses or whatever they're called, the ones that I currently have that are no longer working because of planned obsolescence, and I'm going to give the planned obsolete ones to my daughter. <laughs> they're, like, they're quite That's cheap. heartwarming. That's, I'm a, it's a heartwarming tale of sort of generosity. But um, I'm wondering, like, th those scams... I'm sorry, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Are there scams related to Amazon Prime Day, guys? Oh, there are. And whenever I hear Amazon Prime Day, I just remember one of my favorite football players, Neon Deion Sanders, also known as Prime Time. Oh, I hear a theme coming here, Travis. Like Prime Time for scammers, perhaps? Or? Prime Time. No, I just think like were I to say like this weekend I enjoyed a beautiful grilled prime rib, I would be interrupted by prime time. Uh, yeah, you, you you know this about Adam. He wants to be a he wants to be the voiceover guy for you know every single tasty object for sale on in the world. Come on, wouldn't you like to just be able to be the voice of prime time? I kind of want to hear Travis say it. Travis, can, do you think you could do it a little less... Um, ASMR, sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little less creepy. <laughs> Prime time. All right, guys, are there scams related to Amazon Prime? What are the scams? Come they, on. You know, the scams are everything from, there was a problem with the order that you made. There was something wrong with the credit card. Or... Uh, we just want to make sure that you're there when delivery comes, because someone has to be there to sign for the delivery of this particular product. Because wait, so it's just like a standard, like they're they're just using the the Prime Day, whatever to to guess. I hate this. So it's the same old story. Oh, it is indeed. Yep. So they're just guessing that I bought something, and they're gonna without giving me a specific product, they'll say your order didn't go through. And that could happen at any time in the next three or four weeks, right? S same music, different lyrics. Or they'll find a product that they will be pretty sure that you want, like AirPods, for instance, and then say that they're doing a really, really, really low price on them. And the link will go to Amazon.com or something along those lines. Amazon. Well, so well I mean, I, I just got to add in my inbox saying that it was Summer Black Friday, and this was for a business that was not Amazon.com. So right now, it's just this huge time of year for e-commerce sites to start, you know, doing these deep discounts. But, but it's mean, also, but that's also like, it's for, it's for a holiday that doesn't exist. Exactly, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it seemed to be pushing the point. Labor Day is coming up too, and you're going to be having all kinds of Labor Day sales. So it's just, if you think about it, they're just going from Amazon Day, Prime Day, to Labor Day, prime time, to Thanksgiving, to it's it's Halloween, all that stuff. It's coming. They simply, again, same music, different lyrics. So, Adam, what I'm hearing you say is that when it comes to scams, it's always prime time. Welcome to What the Hack, a show about hackers, scammers, and the people they go after. I'm Adam, Cyber Scam Be Dammer. I'm Bo, Cyber Damp Ham. And I'm Travis, Cyber Gute Dammerung. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're here about a so-called art heist of a different kind, and how an acclaimed artist finally got his money back many, many years later. Please welcome Rudy Shepard. So, Rudy, where are you coming to us from right now? I am in Yonkers, New York, in my studio. Yonkers. Is, uh, uh, Yonkers, New York, which is an onomatopoeia for the sound that Canada geese make, right? 
Yonkers. Yonkers. Really? Yonkers. No, what it's not. No, I think, <laughs> no, it's a messed that's up thing I just said. I have no idea why it's called Yonkers. Bo, that's, I love the big words. Bo's what? using another big word. Yonkers? It's a no. goose word. Goose onomatopoeia. <laughs> oh, onomatopoeia. Yeah, the, anyway. The, ra the raceway is no longer there, is it? Or is oh, it? yeah, it's here. It's alive and kicking. Is that now a casino? That's the one that... It's a casino. It's a raceway. Every once in a while, when I'm driving by, I'll see... Uh, they do the races with the carts. They the have the trotters. the trotters. Trotters. But, Rudy, I don't think of you as living in that part of Yonkers. Are you in that part of Yonkers? Kind of further east. I'm closer to the river. You're like the city part of Yonkers. I live in Riverdale, but this is my. I'm in my studio. My studio is in Yonkers. Oh, you live in Riverdale, but okay. Now we have everything. So, is what's your password for your bank account? <laughs> you got my. You probably figure out my birthday. <laughs> yeah, Travis has already deciphered your social security number, so we're on our way. We're on our way. Too busy looking at the uh, the reason why it's called Yonkers. Why is it so. well? Yonkers has to be a Native American, an Algonquin name, or something. It's uh, Dutch, actually. What? Uh, the young cares, apparently, it means the young gentleman. The young gentleman. Yeah. I have a question. You guys seem to be very good at research. So there's a Tyler, the creator song called Yonkers. Yeah. He's from freaking California. And I would love to know why the song. It's like one of his first famous songs from when he was really young. And I'm like, why <laughs> does he have a song named Yonkers? <laughs> I've already found out. What's the answer, Travis? Yeah. Um, he uh, created it as a parody of stereotypical 1990s New York hip hop. Nice. Oh, so he was right. making fun of uh, of of uh, everybody who was actually from Pelham. Pretty much. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I think I know the answer to this, but I'm fairly certain, unless somebody's in, on Wikipedia right now, they don't know where you're from. Where'd you grow up? Man, that is a complicated question. Do you want the real answer? Yeah, I want the one that's going to give us the security answers for your uh, <laughs> password. Mother's maiden name. <laughs> well, either, the either that or the answer that you give, you know, when the CIA contacts you. No, but really, where'd you grow up? Long story. I was born in Baltimore. Uh-huh. And then when I was like two, we moved to Texas. What? To Lubbock. And then we were only there for like a year and a half. And then we moved to Houston and I was there for like 11 years. So you grew up in Texas and how'd you end up in the Northeast? So my dad's from Brooklyn, from Bushwick, and my mom's from Baltimore. So, I mean, we were in Texas for like 11 years or something. And my folks were just totally isolated. And like, I'm sure, I mean, they almost got divorced. My mom was like, we're coming. So in lieu, instead of them getting divorced, we moved back east to like Northern Virginia. So my mom could be close to her family and so that they didn't get divorced. I like Northern <laughs> probably, Virginia. Probably what, this is all the investigative work that I put together sort of now that I'm 47. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember we, yeah, they almost split up and I almost had to choose between which one. And then we moved back to Northern Virginia. Where Northern Virginia? Uh, Springfield, Virginia. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now so we just, do have everything we need. It was really nice oh, talking yeah, to you yeah. today, Rudy. Uh, I hope you have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask my, like, for my pets, my favorite dog. The only, <laughs> we're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you got to distract me with some other questions. And Rudy, promise us this. Tell me this. I know that you're a fan of the, the band Fish. Um, mm -hmm. Do you... Do all your passwords have fish related uh, themes? <laughs> None of them do, but that is a great idea. No, it's a bad idea. It's a very bad idea. Don't do that. Please don't. Don't. There's, oh, there's, okay. there's Bo trying to scale the heights again. Oh, scale the heights. Oh, that was terrible. So, um, Adam, I don't know if you know this about Rudy, but in addition to being very nice and cheerful and a uh, fish fan, do they call them fish heads? Yeah, they do. I That's guess. kind of horrible. Anyway, a fish head. <laughs> um, he's also a very an, a very accomplished artist, acclaimed, famous, all of that. He's a professor at the at, at Pennsylvania State uh, in the art department there, and on a lot of different uh, boards about the arts. Um, so, Rudy, but what is, is it really? Is it really a happy valley? Well, that's, I was going to get to that. So you like Greek life, Adam. I don't. 
And Rudy teaches at a school that is like absolutely riddled with Greek life. Am I, I mean, Happy Valley is like, so I know there's an artist named Eva O'Leary um, who actually has spent a lot of time chronicling the Happy Valley and it doesn't look that happy. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been at Penn State? For 12 years. What? Time yeah, yeah. flies, man. I remember when you first went there. So yeah. um, now your art practice, can you tell us uh, a bit about it? Because I, I know Travis and, and Adam probably aren't so familiar with what you're up to. So my work, um, I mean, I've done a lot of things over the years, but it's all been sort of political, looking at race and identity and things like that. Um, so when I first, when I was in college, you know, I was kind of looking at history and slavery. Like I went to undergrad down South in North Carolina. So it's like, there's all this history all around you and monuments and, you know, they used to sell slaves on that rock, you know, that kind of shit. So I was like kind of delving into that and seeing the connection between that and like the that I went through as a kid in the, you know, one black kid and like mostly all white schools and things like that. And all the expectations and racism, the positive and negative, like, Oh, he's, really cool or he must be good at basketball or he's into rap and actually i was into like everything you know punk rock and skateboarding and like yeah i never really fit in the box and so that's kind of how i got to art right so i at first it was sort of like trying to look at systems and all that and people were just getting annoyed and like feeling guilty and it only it had sort of a real limit to it now hold on when you so, say you're trying to look into systems what what do you mean by that just for like people who may not like know. how I ended up black people ended up here and how they were treated when they first got here and how that relates to like how we're perceived now. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Which is totally legit. Right. But like when you're just like beating people over the head with like images of lynching and things like that, they're just not a very nuanced conversation. It's like, but as a 20 something year old, you know, it's just like real and visceral and, you know, so my work was very like rah, visceral, you know, and I tried, doing like installations and videos and like really trying to bring it alive and like you know i think i was pretty successful but well, what kind of installations were you doing so i was in chicago going to grad school right and ida b wells is from chicago she did all this research on lynching right so i went to the historical society and did all this research this is a little pre-internet being what it is now and researching lynching in chicago or just in general just lynching in general and ida b wells and like her so i found this page of statistics and here's all the people that were lynched from you know 1882 to 1968 is kind of the time period reconstruction uh, and there's 4642 people so i was like i say that to you you're like yeah it's kind of a lot it's not that it's, uh, maybe i would have thought maybe it was more like it's just like doesn't mean it's, anything it's kind of a lot <laughs> right but it's sort of like i was like how do you make that people feel that number like yeah. that that's a lot of people uh and so i got rope and like 4642 feet of rope I used that as a material. So I made this installation in my studio, the ground's covered in dirt. I cast these wax replicas of my ears and they're kind of mixed in this like brown wax. So you can't really see them. And there's one that's bronze. There's these ropes kind of hanging all tangled. There's a um, text, uh, you know, this page of statistics, state by state, blah, blah, blah. That's all going on the wall and it's photocopied. Each one is like a generation. So the information gets kind of a race to zero, you know, how photocopies work. Like yeah, yeah. And then I had a photograph like of a lynching and I did the same thing with that. So each generation, it just sort of like blurs. And, Disappears. You know, and you think about how history gets a race. But when you walk in the room, like you get the, you can't walk in the room and see the piece without stepping in the dirt and getting it all over your feet. And when you leave, you walk out and you take it with you and you're kind of marred by it. And so thinking about how like we're all implicated, you, me, like our grand, you know, instead of this idea that like, well, I wasn't there. I didn't do it, you know, so. When you think about the installation and you think about the history, the tragic history of all this, yeah, it is, it's amazing, it's mind-boggling that in the past year, finally, Congress passed an anti-lynching law. Yeah, <laughs> a little late, <laughs> but yeah. 70 years late, but yeah, I guess better than never. So wh uh, where did you go from there? So I, so, so that was after the end of my first year of grad school. So I took all that rope. I went to this art residency in Maine and I did this um, installation out in the woods, I guess like a public art piece in the woods. And I took that same rope and I wrapped it all around these trees. Um, and it became more of like a memorial. So like to see the piece, you had to like walk 
like 10 minutes into the woods and I would take you and you would see it. And it would, and it ended up being a more of like a memorial and kind of like an experience and like kind of more of a similar, like the piece was in a similar place of where something like that might happen. And, you know, just sort of like, and then people would talk to me about it. You know, it was like a totally different experience. It shifted things. It was more of a homage to those people that died as opposed to just like smack, 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 like using them uh, in this sort of, you know, with the best intentions, but sort of like in a salacious way. Like, oh, these dead people, it's on you. You know, it was sort of like honoring them more. And that sort of was like a little bit more like, huh, maybe this is a little more of an interesting experience. So I did a performance where I had, it was just at uh, this residency called Skowhegan. So I did this performance where I had like all 60 people were, were there, like meet me at the edge of the woods. And I was like painted in all white, like totally nude. And they didn't know what they were going to see. Most people hadn't seen the piece. And so I just turned around and I started walk, walk into the piece and they started following me. And it's like a 10 minute walk, literally just through the woods in Maine, you know, on the off, from the residency off into the woods. And then, you know, when they get there, they kind of like see the piece and they see me and they understand like I'm the victim and they represent sort of like the lynch mob, you know, which was which was from what I understood a mix of people that wanted to be there that were for what was going on and kids and mothers and people that didn't want to be there that were just sort of like, well, oh, this is going on, you know, which was a part of this phenomenon that I was interested in. It's like when you see, you know, people send me all kinds of shit. so when you see pictures, you see like little kids and they're like, what the fuck is going on, Dad? What am I, why are we here? This is not cool. You know, you know. But they're so was there a, was there a sort of punk rock vibe to that? It sounds a little punk. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was like a little bit of a bait and switch, and you know what I mean. Like you, like wait a minute, what do I represent? You know, um, which I was really into. Um, and to take it like too far, like when we got in the middle, there was like kind of a ring space that I made with all the trees. I played like Strange Fruit by Billie Holiday and that serves us like that. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't need to, but it was definitely like the emotional, like. Now, what what year was this in, uh, Rudy? That was the summer of two thousand. So it's twenty twenty two years ago. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, strange fruit. I mean, strange fruit. You know, actually, I don't know if you know this, but I'm I'm like ninety five percent sure. Travis can look it up. That it was actually written not by Billie Holiday, but it was written by a Yonkers. <laughs> Get school out of teacher. Here. <laughs> I believe it was written by a little old Jewish man from Yonkers. I it was fine. not Tyler the Creator. No, it was not Tyler the Creator. <laughs> but I, but we'll go full circle to Yonkers. Yeah, you were spot on. It's actually uh, was uh, written by a Jewish communist teacher and civil <laughs> rights activist from the Bronx called Abel Mirabal, who wrote it uh, first as a poem. You also do a, a series of portraits of people in the news, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you talk about that a little? One day I was like coming home from therapy. Like I was gone, I was at my studio, then I went to therapy and I'm riding back to the studio and everybody's reading this new newspaper about this guy that um, he had killed black young black guy, looked a little bit like me, bald headed. He had shot two police officers, he killed them. And that day, the day before he was on trial and he had stuck his tongue out at like, um, the wife of one of the victims, right? In court the day before. So the so the post said, fry, baby, fry. And there was a picture of this young black guy looking like me, kind of pouting. And I'm riding on the train and I'm like, man, that's up. Like, like just layers of up. Like what he did was up. Like the post just being like, just burn this guy. Like, for, you know what I mean? Like, and then like, so I'm just riding the train. I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, he looks a lot like me. Like everybody's probably looking at me now in relationship to him in this huge ad, you know, that covers the, so I just like took the paper, like I bought a copy and I like put it on the wall in my studio and I'm making these sculptures. And eventually I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna make a painting of this guy. And it just led to another portrait of another black guy in the midst of some terrible thing that he did or didn't do, you know, and just how the media like 
but also I heroes. But you also play. You also paint heroes, Rudy. I mean, from what I mean. Yeah, but it started off with this. You know, it started off very specifically with these people and how they were kind of convicted by the media and this sort of examination of like how in America we don't have like one religion, right? But like, so the media kind of stands in for like the arbiter of like our morals. Like this person's good, this person's bad. Don't do this. Oh, this is embarrassing. Let's laugh at this person now. You know, like the, the machinations of how it's sort of like we're all on board on like kind of one ethos. Like that's kind of like what the project's really about is like how the media is just sort of like, this is good now, this is bad now. Don't be like this person, be like that person, you know? And so it started with these black people convicted of crimes that were like convicted by the media and everybody just assumes they're guilty. And then it kind of grew into looking at both the criminals and the victims and like trying to make portraits of both of them and mixing them together and not telling you who's who and you, you know, like now they're just people again. And then uh, then you can look at the little index and see like, oh, I'm supposed to hate this one. I'm, I'm supposed to feel sad about that one, you know, and just kind of exploring that and how it's presented. Well, the and, and the and the other thing, which is interesting when you're talking about the media convicting, it mm -hmm. depends upon which media, yeah. because yeah. Oh, certain yeah, media no, convicts yeah. one group of people and the other media convicts the other group yeah. of people. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Th this, you know, this seems like perfect for social media do you do you post this online i do yeah yeah i mean that's what happens sort of a couple of years into it is that like you know usually at first it was just, just like all right i have a show every two years you know like classic sort of artist cycle and so i'd be making this work and then i'd put it up and like people would be like who's that again you know there's kind of this lag of time and people forget half of the people that are on the every paper for a week and then they disappear, you know, uh, and then I kind of got frustrated with the time lag. And I started just like seeing something in the media, making work about it and then, then like putting it on social media. And is it very fast? The the works fast? Well, you know, within the day, I mean, I don't like super fast. You know what I mean? Like I might like literally be on my way to the studio, see a newspaper and just like make work about that that day and then post it. And people are thinking about it. They've just seen the same story. And it just leads to this like more kind of active conversation with other people that are seeing it um and you know like what's interesting for me is like you never know which one of these stories is going to pop off right like i made a painting of george floyd like the day i heard about it which is maybe the day after it happened just thinking like this is another up story it wasn't the first it wasn't anything particularly unique but like people caught on to it and all of a sudden it was a really big deal that I made that painting and I got hundreds of things and everybody wants to show it and follow it and repost it. But it's like, I did like probably a hundred other people and people were like, whatever, I don't care about, you know, all these other people, you know, that died just like a year before. So, you know, it's like, you never know. There's like, I've been able to just sort of watch like, huh, is that interesting? Like, this is important. This isn't for whatever reason. It's not. Do people get in touch with you to buy these things or? Yeah, they do. I had a gallery forever, like from 2003 to 2016, something like that. 14 years, I had this gallery, everything's going great. 2016, they closed. The person running it was just like, I'm done. So from 2016 to 2020 or whatever, I was kind of just like, everything was coming directly through me. I'm selling work, I'm having shows, I'm, I'm, it's just me. Before that, the gallery dealt with everything. Museum wants to show my work, they go through the gallery. Somebody wants to buy stuff, they go through the gallery. I don't really know how it all works. I just like, hey, Rudy, you know, bring the work in. We'll ship it over to, you know, Tennessee to have a show or something. Right. But at this point, 2019, galleries close. Definitely things slow down. But every once in a while, somebody reaches out and wants to buy something and I sell it to them and I mail it off to them and I get 100 percent of the profit. So it's great. Right. So I have a website. Right. And it has a contact page. So like nowadays, like by 2019, like that just goes straight to the trash. My email has figured out that this 95% of it is just straight garbage, uh, you know, ads and just random bots and whatever. So I have to look in the trash every once in a while because sometimes there's a legit like, hey, like, come have a show at this gallery or something like that. So I'm digging through the trash and I see like, hey, I want to buy some of your art. Did, and did you smell a rat? No, I didn't. In summer of 2019, I've, I've tracked it down. One guy reached out to me, wanted to buy a piece. I made a painting of Nipsey Hussle. Like, it was it one of these portraits that you you post on on your Instagram account? Yep, yep. I posted it okay. on there. Well, remember, he was he was assassinated. So. Yep, 
Yep, yep. So I posted on there. Someone uh, from LA who had bought my work before saw it and was like, reached out, like DM me, like, hey, I want to buy this. I'm like, great. Here's how much it is. I pack it up, I mail it off to him, and it gets damaged on the way. So then he's reaching out, like, oh, the piece got damaged. So he sends it back to me. I'm like, all right, what are we going to do? I need to refund you. He's like, why don't you make another one? So I make another one. I send that to him. He's like, oh, I don't know. It looks different. It's not quite as good as the first one. God, this guy so sounds really So I'm in the annoying. midst of all of this, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, all right. Like, I get another mess. Like, in the midst of, like, dealing with this guy in California and the damaged piece and the remaking the piece. So I'm digging through the trash and I see, like, hey, I want to buy some of your art. Oh, he says it was, like, his wife's birthday he wants to send her buy a piece of my art and give it to her as a present a birthday present but he wants it to be a surprise so he can't use his own bank account he's going to use his company's bank account right now wait no stop, i gotta stop you right there yes. is he now is he looking for his wife's present to be one of these really punk rock images from no, no. your well, portrait he doesn't series say at first he's just like i want to buy a piece of your art and then he, I'd say, well, we'll pick something out and then we'll, you know, we'll go from there. I'll tell you how much it is or whatever. So he picks out one of the holy mountains, which I'm like, that makes sense, right? You know, they're just pretty mountains. So it makes sense. I'm like, great. Yeah, of course you want them. Yep. It's all tracking, you know? So it's 1600 bucks. So he's like, all right, well, um, I'm going to pay you twice that and you're going to pay the shipper and then the shipper is going to, you know, the sh shipper will be in touch with you directly. I'm in wherever he is and, you know. So you guys can just like work that all out. So I'll send you this check from my company and then you pay the shipper. Did you say what the company was? His company? No, he didn't say in the email. Right. Okay. Now, but why was he sending you twi twice the Because he's using this art shipper. He said that, uh, you know, he wanted to buy your Holy Mountain piece, which is a mm -hmm. wonderful piece. And that uh, he was going to send you extra money because it should cover shipping, handling, and a lot of other stuff. Yeah. yeah, so that was the idea. You know, that would maybe there'd be extra left over. He'd get it back or something. So um, okay, huh. and is this something you'd run into before? No, never. Okay, so but definitely unusual. I think I was distracted by the other sale that was kind of going. So when I sent the first thing to the first guy, like I rushed. Yeah. I was just like, I just grabbed it and like didn't wrap it very well and dropped it off of the, you know, like, why did I rush? You know, I'm like distracted and worried about, oh, what does he need his money back now? I'm talking to my friend over here about, you know, I'm like in the midst of that and whatever yeah. else is, I can't think of what else might have been going on, you know, like life and whatever, and just not paying a lot of close attention. And also just like, man, it'd be great to get this 600 bucks, 1600 bucks for this art piece. I could sure use the money, right? And sort of like, right. Comedy. Well, you know what you should do, Rudy, is you should you should market them as crumpled up, and then you don't have to worry about the shipping. <laughs> right. Extra in papers. <laughs> but this is just, you know, yeah. this is how these guys work. Is that yeah. you know, obviously you're distracted, you're busy, you're living life, you're you're doing yeah. your day job, mm -hmm. and uh, and within the context of that, mm -hmm. they they try to catch you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of like a little ask here. What do what, we let's do it this way instead of that way? Like, let's use Zelle instead of Venmo. I was like, all right, what do I, I don't know? So I keep saying, like, sure, 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 sure. So I'm like, like all right, you know, I'm going to be careful. Like, I'm going to deposit this check he gave me and make sure it clears before I send him anything, right? That's me being careful. So I put it in, I wait five days. He keeps emailing me, hounding me, what's taking you so long? When are we going to do X, Y, or Z, you know? And I'm just sort of like trying to like, all right, uh, slam the brakes, slam the brakes. But that was a good move. That was an excellent move. No, but he was but, the right move. But Adam, what 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 I'm hearing, Adam, is the rush. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, everything yeah. is yes, yes. Today, 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 urgent, urgent. Was he poking you hard? He was really trying to get yeah, you to get going? Yeah, every day email, at least once or twice, right? And this is okay. all happens within a week and a half, but he's pushing, pushing, pushing. And I'm like, oh, God, I got to do some kind of due diligence. So I don't know this other. I've learned a lot through this, right? So like. Citibank will just clear a check. It doesn't mean anything. They haven't done anything. It doesn't mean it's really cleared and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So it goes from pending, you know, you have, I don't know if you have Citibank, but it'll sit, it sits up there under pending and then it'll drop down to like, now it's really in, you know, if you bought something. And, and this is through the uh, company account, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. SJ something, whatever, you know, some random thing. That's not the guy. It's not the shipper. It's just right. Right. 
see. Um, so he clears, and then I sell him, you know, like the 1600 bucks. What happens next is, so he asked me for more money for something else. I don't remember this. I don't have it written down anywhere. Um, and right, but, yeah, by but the time he, that he, happened, I already had figured out like, no, oh. but have you sent the art? No, that's the thing. We're on to like, we haven't even gotten to, he sent me the check. I sent him the money. Now he's asking for something else. He hasn't even asked me to send him the art yet. All right, Adam. So I'm, I just, I'm trying, I feel like I'm hallucinating. Mm -hmm. uh, he got a check from this guy from the, the buyer. from the guy's company from the guy's company right and he he goes to cash the check yeah and before that is finished he's asking for money back is that do i have that right yeah and i'm feeling guilty like oh i've got the guy's money you know what i mean and i don't haven't given him anything i think that was part of it too like in that interim time when i'm oh, dating, i'm feeling like like a bad person for like holding on to his money and not giving him anything because to me, I've gotten it's in my account, you know, so I'm feeling the pressure of like, oh, I better. Well, but, you know, finally, it, it cleared. Guy. You you did the smart That's what thing. I'm saying. Once it cleared, yeah. I'm like, oh, I better give this guy this money or whatever. Is, yeah. Is, get the ball rolling. So, but let me ask you a question, Rudy. When he was pushing you and saying, did you get the money? Did you get the money? Can you send me the money? Did you get the money? Yeah. What about the art? Was he saying, have you sent the art? Do you have a certificate of insurance? Do you, where's the shipping label? What's going on? Nope. Nope. Nothing. So well, that is a clue. You gotta you gotta remember this is all happening within like a week and a half. There wasn't a lot of time. No, you, know you also I mean? like, have this you also have saying? another person who's annoyed by not getting the painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'm over here doing kind of yeah. thing with. Meanwhile, yeah. the guy's really saying to you, I sent you thirty two hundred, but can you send me five thousand back? You know, just and yeah, the exactly. Art. It's, it's, that's like, kind of where it's going. Like the next yeah. request is like now some Did it go and, there? Well, I think what he was saying is that, like, oh, it's, the shipping's going to be even more. Like, can you send another five hundred or something? You know, something wow. like that, or fronted, it's or like something bleeding like you. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I was like, no, well, I'm that's not. like that's <laughs> like Bo. Bo has a scammer, Thomas, and Bo's offering him five thousand dollars to come on the show and tell his story. And Thomas uh -huh. is going, no, I just want my thirty dollars. <laughs> 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 So, so um so so once like bing he's asking for more i'm on the phone now i'm on the phone with citibank like can you read can you turn this around like i'm trying to make it their fault like why'd you clear it if it wasn't real and they're saying sir you should never have used zelle like that's only for people you know and there's no un reversing a zelle charge you know like i'm i'm on to fighting with them and trying to placate the guy in california and get him their peace and like i pretty much stopped talking to the guy how much did you send him from how much did you send him from Zell? 1600. Okay. Right, right, right. No, and how much was the check? 3200. No, and he disappears okay. basically. But the check was $3200. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But the check was a bad check. Yeah. But well, you know how long it took for it to to go bad? It took three months or something like that for the city. Three months. Like, the check is no good. I'm like, how could I have waited three months for it to find out from you? You sent him 1600 bucks. He sent you 3200 You did that on the strength of that check clearing. Yep. I don't get the problem. Oh, there. the problem is that the I reached out to the bank and I said, this is a scam. This guy isn't who he says he is. Can you just reverse the Zell charge? Right. What'd they say? They said, no. They said, Zell, like you sent a Zell to them. It's none of our business who they are. Like, we're not getting in the middle of it. Like, did you? But did they know they the check was bad? It, to, it was some African name. And I was like, yeah, they told me to send it to them. And that's who I sent it to. Well, they're like, you did what they asked you to do. If you didn't know who they were, you shouldn't have done it. That's. But that's wait, did they bank. tell you about your check clearing or no? Well, then I got to talking to them about that. Like I sent it to him because you said the check was good. I, there was a time in there where I was fighting with them. I knew that check was going to bounce or like I had like a pretty good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I had a pretty good understanding. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sending money to some African guy, the guy in the email, some white guy, which, you know, makes you feel comfortable. And the company, the check comes from is just some other random, like, you know, I just put it all together. I was like, maybe there's some off chance the check's going to clear. I'm going to keep the money. But probably not. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sitting for three months. In the meantime, I'm talking to Citibank. Like, can we just, like, stop this before it happens? Or, like, it just happened a minute ago. Can you? Like, I feel like as soon as I sent it to Zell, it just, like, 
I feel like just right away, I was like, oh, no. Well, you know, Zell now has warnings about the fact that make sure you're sending it to somebody you know, because we ain't giving it back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At, at this point in 2019, you can look it up. Zell was, no, they were uh, new. was new to me. It was super new. I was like, what's Zell? I don't know what Zell is. But the $1,600 is in this dude's uh, account now. Yep. And that's he just disappears? Or does he say, like, where's my art? Or is that the end of him? No, he doesn't say where's my art. He asked for, like, something else. Like, $500 more for the shipping. It's going to cost more. I really, that's kind of vaguely what I remember. And I said, ah, you know what? I don't feel comfortable. I don't really know who you are. And, like, he may have feigned, like, one response. And then he just disappeared. He's like, I've gotten as much as I'm going to get out of this sucker. I think he's on to me. (laughs) Is what it appeared. I mean, he literally just... Didn't ask for any art, nothing. That's how I just wow. knew it was not real money. If it was, he'd be asking for his art piece. You know, it just confirmed it. I think that's what kind of what confirmed it before the check bounced three months later. That guy just disappeared. So for three years, guys, three, I'm what? like three years, what? I sit just hosed, right? Crying to my Host. friends, crying to anybody that'll listen. And then I find out, okay, so there's two pieces of the story. So I find out that this actually happened to my wife's mother's husband, second husband, right? It happened to him like a couple of years before, but he didn't tell an artist because he was embarrassed. Yeah. He's like a self-made artist. Like he retired and then became an artist Mm -hmm. and it Mm -hmm. happened to him. And it happened so many times. He's living up in Buffalo, right? And he's part of this like art collective. It happened to so many people in the art collective that it says on their website, people don't respond to these emails. But he never told me because he was embarrassed. You know, he's like this macho guy. I can't tell anybody I got scammed. Literally beat for beat the exact same thing happened. This is why we're all here. Because your appearance on this show Mm -hmm. and telling your story, other people will... God willing, avoid the problem because someone had the courage to step up and go, I did it. It happened. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just about to do it, actually. No, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I blame this whole thing somehow in my mind. I had, uh, there's like this Bronx art collective thing that I joined that I was like, my ex was like, oh, you should join it. You'll get grants and stuff. And I'm like, it put me on this list with a bunch of like, are you know people that like represent themselves and i'm sure people go to that website and they just like hit all those people you know what i mean they're sort of like it's pretty clear you're probably like selling your work yourself you don't have a gallery right so nasty it's like they're going after the vincent van gogh's of the world yeah but vincent van gogh had an art dealer brother but still they're going after Uh, the people that are sort of like you know like no it's the independent contractor go after the independent contractor yeah so three years so for three years i'm just like Trying to just forget it, turn it over. I paid sixteen hundred dollars to learn this lesson. Whatever, you know. Let's in my mind trying to just like put it away and like not forgive myself. You know what I mean? Like just let it know that I just got scammed, and it's like I'm like I don't need them. I'm like trying every mental trick to be like it's okay that I got scammed. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna be okay. In in, in where where, I, where I'm from, mm-hmm. the, in Yiddish, this would be known as Rebbe Gelt which is Ooh. the money you pay the rabbi to learn the lesson. Okay, so, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here's the thing, $1,700 shows up in my bank account like in May of this year, 2022. What? Three years later. Nice. I'm like, well, that's cool. And in my mind, even before I know what it is, I'm like, well, that's the, you know, I'm already like a lot's happened in three years, like a lot. You can ask Bo, like so much drama in my life, kid drug problem goes to rehab so this is karmic payback literally this is karmic this is god just like here i was like oh even steven i don't know what this money is with interest with yeah, interest, interest. Yeah. somehow even more <laughs> and then a couple weeks later i get a letter from Citibank, and it says you sent money through zell to somebody and it didn't get to the person that you sent it to like something kind of vague that at first when I read it, I took it one way to be like, oh, see, they're admitting that I was scammed. And then I took it another way to think like, oh, maybe it never like made it to its destination. Like, I really don't know. You know, they kind of left it like vague enough that you don't know what they mean. Like the money you sent didn't go to the person you meant to send it to. But you saw the money go. Right. That could mean that the, it bounced, like it didn't make it to its destination. They got busted. They're admitting that I got scammed and they sent it to like the person, which was I was trying to say is like, 
this isn't who I was sending it to. It's the prince of, you know, Nigeria. So I have no idea. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You, mean, wait you mean the money that I sent to the prince of Nigeria wasn't really <laughs> to the prince of Nigeria? <laughs> yeah. And, and so you have to send that to money. Me? I did that. No, I did that too. You have to send that money if you want to get the estate settlement for the two point six million dollars. Well, that's true. I did wow. that. Yeah. Oh, I never got. I haven't got my money yet. But they said it might take like ten or twelve years. No, but Travis and I have, have each bought a Ferrari, so we thank you for the money, Bo. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you yeah. rat finks, Travis. You got anything? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do any uh, like kind of follow up research on either the name or uh, of the person or the name of the company? Mm, I mean, I think I did early on and it kind of didn't. Well, Travis uh, will. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, I sort of have erased everything now from my, yeah, I mean, sure. well, it's been long enough that it's just buried in my email somewhere. But yeah, I, I guess one of the main things I'm wondering is whether or not that was like a stolen check from an actual business or yeah. if that was a phony business that had been set up and kind of how that one, uh, how that factored into it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know that I looked up the company. I think I looked up the initial guy, like Malcolm, blah blah blah. You know, actually, I looked it up right away, and it was a real person. Like the mm -hmm. the name sure. on the email was like just some white guy. You know, you look up, look it up, and it's a white guy, and it's at some kind of like right. this event. And so I was like, well, you know, uh, that tracks, you know. But the check and the person that I sent the Zell to were like not him. So it's mm -hmm. sort of, you know. You do have the money back now, right? Yeah, I do. Like as of a couple months ago, which is just crazy. Wow. But you didn't get it. It was no, it was through no activism of your own, yeah. correct? How long yeah. after I given up on it? All right, so well, we know that, you know, like you, your art is always looking at forgiving wrongdoers. If you can. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Being understanding showing the heart, showing the love. And <laughs> I'm sure this is one wrongdoer you don't feel like you want to show the heart and love for. Yeah, I mean, it really had me questioning like human nature, just like, are people evil? <laughs> Am I wrong <laughs> <laughs> to be so like, well, maybe that murderer, you know, had a good, not a good reason, but you know, extenuating circumstances, you know, it's just like that whole, sort of belief system that it's all just way more complicated i'm sure what was going on in the back of your mind was that if it was just the 1600 i might have forgiven him but then with the little blank ask me for even more money now i'm pissed so. yeah, yeah and i'm hurt and i'm embarrassed and i'm you know it's it goes beyond the money to like like i talked to a friend of mine and he was like yeah you're just out there like in your art and like put your heart out there and working your hardest and somebody for somebody to take advantage of you there specifically right is um somehow just really hurt even more So since you've had this experience, have you gotten emails from other people where you started to question whether oh, they I've were gotten the same it? email somehow recently, this email comes right into my regular inbox. So I've gotten it like in the last, since, since January, I've gotten probably three of these change the names. I'm buying a gift for my, like literally word for word. They didn't change the email. So it was at the end of last year uh, that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau issued uh, more guidance to banks about what losses that they actually need to cover in the case of fraud. Ah, uh, what? Right. So maybe that might have something to do with uh, why you just got refunded. We'll probably never know, but yeah, so better late than ever. But that might also explain the uh, three year delay on your end. Wow. So then they were on the hook for this? Yeah. Seems According like According to the new rules? Wow. Or they would have just been uh, content to sit on that money for, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, you for as long love, as it took. You got to yeah. love the CFPB. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's after, after, I have a, a lot few, of faith in the... <laughs> After a few years of darkness, uh, the CFPB yeah, yeah, yeah. is, I mean, is back. I mean, it's an epidemic. Yeah. It's back. Well, golly, this was awesome. 
I mean, I mean, I'm sorry what happened to you and what happened to you. Hey, wasn't awesome. now it's just a great story. I'm, but it's I'm this even is a, deep, but I might have even made 50 bucks somehow. You know, I think one of the important things to remember in all of this is when it's your product, <laughs> you have a perfect right to dictate terms of the sale. When it's, you know, it's all about what you're getting paid. I think it's important to be in a position to take the smart route, which is I want to be paid the way I want to be paid, not the way you want to pay me because you're buying something from me. But now that's, it's a funny thing that you, you bring up there, Adam, because Travis and I both have uh, plenty of experience as freelancers. Mm -hmm. And Travis, when you make a website for somebody, do you get paid up front? At least in part. Yeah. Now, but you also have the ability to say, like, you can turn the keys over to said website or not. Right. Like, you have the code. But as a writer, I uh, have never had this experience, knock on wood, but I send pieces in all the time and I don't even expect to get paid for 90 days. Now, mm -hmm. there is copyright there, and sure, there's, there's a lot of different protections that one gets, but... It's not just when you're selling something. There's a lot of other ways in which you can be scammed. You know, if you go to any one of the sites like Shopify, eBay, any of those sites and buy things um, or sell things. Also, haven't there been issues with the, uh, uh, what, the Facebook marketplace? Uh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So what else? Where, what, else, what other kind of things could people scam you on? Oh, sports tickets, concert tickets. Rally, tickets. rally tickets. Ra Adam, we are an apolitical <laughs> show. We are totally an auto rally. Ticket. Oh, and uh, the truth of the matter is, there are just so many different avenues that they can take to try to scam you based on whatever it is you're trying to sell or buy. You always question, and uh, you never. This is a new world where, you know, it used to be trust but verify. Now it's never trust, always verify. Tragic, true. But also, and just take it slow. In your quest for instant gratification, you could end up getting hurt. Now, when you're paying for things, though, you know, there's Venmo, there's PayPal, there is... Credit cards, the credit cards, credit cards. service that we shall not name. I was still talking, but I seem to hear a, there's a little credit card bird in the room. Credit card. No. Yeah. It, so no, but that's that is the way to go, right? Always, always, because credit cards. First of all, they have more protections. <laughs> Certainly, when you use a lot of these, um, not so much PayPal, but when you use the you know the instant cash transfer services, you could have a situation where it's instantly transferred, and you didn't heed the warning. Which is just remember once you make sure it's somebody you know, because if it isn't, and that you hit send, it could be gone forever. Thanks everyone for listening. And if you like the episode, please give us five stars and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. What the Hack with Adam Levin is a production of Loud Tree Media. It's produced by Andrew Stephen. You can find us online at loudtreemedia.com and on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Adam K. Levin.